Welcome to the second Buckfastly Wild Watch moth, morning moth search. Uh, we've set the trap last night and we've come, it's the uh, middle of June and lots of moths in the trap. So hopefully we'll get some good ones today, including some hawk moths. Okay, well this time of year is always exciting. Now, we, when we were here in the spring, there were quite a few moths about, but really once you get into June, midsummer, that's when there's a lot of moths flying. And particularly when you get a mild overcast night with a hint of rain, it's a little bit damp this morning. That's an excellent night for moths and it was very good last night. So I'm quite excited looking in the trap this morning. You already see there's a lobster moth and a, there's a miller moth. It's a nice one there. I've seen one of those for a while. Uh, peppered moth and buck vermin, so lots of things in the trap. So I'll make a note of some of these in a minute. But first of all, we'll just have a look through. So, mm, here's a good one. Right. So let's go through egg box. Maybe. A few things will fly away, especially when you get a lot of moths like this. Uh, some of them will just flap away. It's still quite mild here this morning. Often if it's cold in the morning, the moths won't be so active, but it's it's reasonably mild. It's uh, probably 10 degrees or plus at the moment. So we've got a few good ones in here. Obviously the most striking ones that really catch your eye to start with are the hawk moths. This is what we were hoping to see. And we have got some hawk moths. So here is a poplar hawk moth. Fabulous moth. It's the only, it's easy to identify. It's the only British moth, hawk moth, and these big hawk moths that rests with its hind wings showing in front of the fore wings. And if you just push the wing back there, you see it has a little red patch there on its wing. Rather smart looking moth, the poplar hawk. And what else have we got here? A treble lines. It's got three lines on each wing. Nice one, that. Okay, oh, here's a bit. He's a beast. It's a little bit worn, but one of Britain's biggest moths, the po uh, privet hawk moth. Um, he's been through the wars a bit, this one. Um, but this is a you know, real proper moth, that is. Yeah, it's a beast. It's, uh, you see the size of it against my finger. It's a, you know, 15, no, 12, 15 centimetre wingspan. And it has an amazing, so again, it's a bit warm. It has a pink and black sort of wasp-like body. And if it's disturbed, it will flash this. And it also has these white antennae and it will flick those forward and sort of flap around. So if a bird came and tried to attack it, um, it would try and put them off by, I don't know what it's trying to look like, but it's trying to look quite frightening. <laughs> there we go, so that's the privet hawk moth. One of the commonest moths is the heart and dart. And this one has a heart and a dart on its wing, so it's an easy one to identify. And it's a very common grassland moth. You see here there's the heart and there's the dart on the wing, and there's a few of those around. And you can see on here there's several of these. They, the caterpillars feed in the roots of uh, grasses and other plants. So there is a very common grassland moth. Not as common as it used to be. I remember when I first started moth trapping in 1976 in Hampshire. I remember one night I caught about 800 heart and darts in one, a single night. Uh, you never really see those sort of numbers these days. There's peppered moth and the flame shoulder. It's a little bit warm that one, but uh, has the lovely flame marking along the shoulders there. Okay, delving deeper into the trap now. Um, oh, another privet hawk moth, and this is a much nicer one. So this one's in pretty good nick and it's doing its little trick. It will flap around, here we go. It flaps around and puts those white antennae forward and then flicks its wings and then shows off that bright pink sort of wasp-like body. Quite amazing, if you touch it, pretend to be a bird trying to peck it. It does this amazing display, fantastic thing. I like these antennae pointing forward. I'm not sure what that's trying to look like, but um, I think if I was a small bird, I'd be frightened of that. Amazing privet hawk moth. Uh, stunner. Um, these are all males. I was always hoping to catch a female because the uh, 
you can get a female, you maybe get her to lay some eggs and then you can see the caterpillar. Because the, you might think, why is it called a lobster moth? But it's actually not the moth, it's the caterpillar it's named after. And a lot of the moths are named after the caterpillar because you know, a few hundred years ago, before there were lights, electric lights, uh, people were more likely to find the caterpillar than the actual moth. So the caterpillar of the lobster moth doesn't really look like a caterpillar at all. It's a weird thing and it has great big long, sort of lobster red brown colour and has very long legs, particularly the forelegs, and it waves them around and it has a sort of funny back end which looks a bit like a, maybe like a, a snake's tongue or something like that and it waggles that around as well and it looks it's quite sort of grotesque actually. Uh, amazing looking caterpillar. So this one's a small angle shade. A uh, lovely little moth there, stunning little markings, very dark with a pale buffy bit on the, in the middle of the wing there. And this one's a really nice one, the figure of 80. And it has, as its name suggests, has a number 80 on its wings. Let's work it out, do it the right way around. It sits with its wings curled up, probably sitting on a twig. That one will be 80 on the wings, that's a good one. Oh, here's a nice one, this is a herald moth. There we go, beautiful thing. It looks a bit like a dead leaf. And in fact, it hibernates as an adult moth. So in caves and mines around here, you'll find, if you go there in the winter, you'll find this moth. Uh, it's flapping around a bit now. Um, it has beautiful leaf-like markings. And it will just sit on a, on a rock or a wall in underground uh, all through the winter. Here we go, there's a buff tip moth. This is one of them, probably the most amazing camp. It's a camouflage. I've put some twigs along actually somewhere. There they are. Um, just to show how this camouflage works, it's a broken birch twig. And if we stick the moth on, they, I have found them during the day occasionally, and they always rest crossways on like that. And then they'll sit, and their head looks exactly like the broken end of a, a twig. And if you look, I snap a twig and a bit of birch like that. And you can see against there, it even has this little brown rim and the hint of a, the middle of the twig where the, you know, the, it sort of decayed away a bit in, this, in the middle there. So it looks almost identical to that. And then it will sit crossways along, so it just looks like a twig has snapped off. And it will stay there right through the daytime, looking amazingly camouflaged. It doesn't really look like a moth at all, but it is a moth. It has legs, a little head, and you just see its eyes under the top there. And oh, this one I got out first, but uh, you can actually look at this is the elephant hawk moth. This is a rather spectacular moth, beautiful colours, sort of olive green and pink with really neat white legs. Uh, quite a stunning thing. It looks quite bright, but actually, it's amazingly camouflaged. If it's sitting on its food plants, which are things like willow herbs, which have red stems, and if you put them onto that, it just melts away into the background has a very, very big caterpillar and that's again it's named after the caterpillar. The caterpillar has almost like a trunk coming out of the front of it, it has big eye spots on, it's actually a snake mimic, uh, it looks like a little python in the grass and um, people often phone me up and say I think I found a caterpillar, well I think it may be a snake. I would say it's, uh, it will be an elephant hawk moth caterpillar. They're around in the late summer, usually about August time people find them. They often feed on fuchsias in people's gardens. It's the elephant hawk moth. So we've got a few hawk moths. Um, on the straw dot there. The white ermine. Last time we had the muslin moth, which pretended to be dead. This time we've got the white ermine moth, and that does the same thing. So if a bird attacks that, it just curls up its body, shows off a little orange patch on the underside, and pretends to be dead for a while. So if we pretend to be a bird pecking it like that, and it will play dead. You see it's playing dead like that. There's also, we've probably got the buff ermine here. Yeah, here's the buff ermine as well, and that's related to the white ermine. That does the same. So if you pretend to be a bird picking it up, they, it will pretend to be dead as well. It's called catalepsy, you know, pretending to be dead. Quite a few insects do this. It's a good technique for, obviously it must work because they do it, um, just for putting birds off. And I think these are slightly poisonous as well because they, they show off an orange or warning markings as well on their body when they do this. Okay, well, we've had a pretty good catch. We've had some lovely hawk moths, that privet hawk moth, particularly special one to see. 
um, and lots of other moths. So the moths are still be building in numbers this time of year. So maybe we'll come back in a few weeks time in July time, which is when you get the real peak numbers of moths. So hopefully we'll get some good ones then.